So, Lynette, would I be safe in assuming that you're not on board with the latest Japanese yen uh, management? <laughs> where it's interesting, last week they had an intervention uh, using dollar assets to prop up the yen. And I saw on Twitter, which led me to pull up the chart here today. I mean, it looks like it's blown back in their face pretty quickly, uh, faster than the ruble got blown back in the U.S. face after those sanctions. But it's like we're seeing more interventions now and finally getting to the point where the market just is blowing it off and not believing it. Voila. That's that confidence piece. But we also have to remember that it was several months ago that global central banks volunteered market confidence in what, what the central bankers say. So part of the danger is that they're now trying to claw back that confidence by at all cost. I mean, they're not paying attention, which I don't know that they ever really pay attention to the impact of their choices. They just keep making the same bad choices over and over. And so I think what we have right now is a reverse currency war. And it's definitely, for the U.S. dollar, they're kind of giving the whole world this because obviously a stronger dollar it makes it a lot harder for corporations to repay their dollar-denominated debt when they don't earn dollars. So the, the foreign foreigners that have borrowed dollar-denominated debt, they got to pay it back. And the dollar is the strongest level that it's been going back to 2002 peak. And the interesting part about that is it bought it, it peaked in 2002, but then the dollar bottomed and went to all time lows in 2007. And I remember that so clearly because when I saw it break to all time lows against the basket of currencies, I remember that weekend I had to go to Vancouver for a family. We were having a little family thing. And I was trying to tell my sisters and brothers that something very nasty was about to happen. And um, that I, when I went back, I was gonna recommend to my mom that she sell you know, off her, port, her stock portfolio. And I remember them telling me, oh, you know, this economy is the strongest it's ever been. You're just a doom and gloomer. My mom was like, no, I'm okay. Until a few months later, and she said to me, Lynn, there's got to be something wrong. Would you look at my statement? I'm like, you know, the signals don't lie. The formulas don't lie. The patterns don't lie. We can fool ourselves, but the patterns don't lie. And, you know, and, and particularly when you're looking at silver and gold, you know, what are you really looking at? You're looking at the spot market. And those are contracts. And it is so easy to manipulate them. And it is so cheap to create as much silver and gold as you want for like nothing. I mean, it's much cheaper to buy a derivative than it is to actually buy 500 ounces of gold and 5,000 ounces of silver. I mean, eh, why would you want to do that? Then you got to store it, blah, blah, blah. All these, and it doesn't pay interest. Oh my God. So look at how attractive these money markets are. Hey, government bonds. This is a great time to go out and buy those government bonds. But you got to look at the purchasing power, right? You look at Zimbabwe. Look at Venezuela. A trillion times zero is zero. And they know that we're at zero already. And all it's going to take is this little push of the loss of confidence. And I think that could be triggered it could be triggered at any moment, really. Uh, and it'll start in the UK this time, but it'll travel. It'll definitely travel. Yeah. And in terms of uh, not being easy, it's not easy to stack silver like my basement here. You know, you got takes a little effort and muscle power. Although back to what you were saying, I mean, it does make a lot of sense. And I think that's one of the things that there was less discussion on earlier this year with the Fed raising interest rates. We were wondering how things were going to go here in the U.S. But really seeing this acceleration, which seems to have picked up in the past week or so, 
And as you see that dollar index soaring, it's interesting. Dollar index, 81% euro, yen, and pound. So, I mean, we see the, the dollar soaring against some things that are getting absolutely clobbered right now. Although underneath the dollar, we look at the U.S. bond market, which that's starting to, I mean, I know they like to talk about keeping things steady and orderly. Yeah. We started raising interest rates back here. I guess it took a couple months before the market was ready to decide if they were really serious about going through with that. But th these are starting to become some big jumps here. Yeah. So it's not just international, but now putting pressure in the U.S. as well. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, you've got the 10-year near 4%, which, you know, I mean, and historically, that's not really that high. But when you've had interest rates anchored at zero for more than a decade, and now you're pushing 4%, I mean, what was it even six months ago? A whole lot lower. So, you know, but hey, Look, if the housing bubble pops, that's not as inflationary. If more and more people lose their jobs, well, okay, then they won't we we can regain that price stability, which if you look at their definition, the central bank definition of price stability is simply that workers don't ask for more money. So they're getting their inflation at 2%. Yeah, they're robbing you of your purchasing power. And, but you're kind of good with it. You're like, well, I'm not, it's, it's happening slow enough. So I'm not going to change what I'm asking for when I go in for a job, but you got a tight job market and you've got raging inflation and they don't have price stability anymore. It's not that prices stay stable. It's that you don't ask for more money because God forbid we should get into a wage price spiral. I mean, it's okay if CEOs are earning a thousand times what the average worker is owning, earning, even though back in the 1970s, it was 20 times. Yeah, but that, that's okay. It's okay for the corporations to be making more money. I mean, if you look at corporate profits, have you looked at that chart? Mm -hmm. Pull that up. That's one of my favorites. It's in the FRED, F-R-E-D, and you pull up the corporate profits. I mean, it's ridiculous how much money these corporations are making, but you know, that certainly has nothing to do with inflation, right? Of course not. Of course not. I mean, of course not. No. Course. And all oh, that has nothing to do with price stability. That's okay. I mean, look at that. I'm sure it had nothing to do with the expansion. In fact, it looks quite a bit like the expansion of the monetary base there. And Gee, doesn't it? Huh. What a coinky dig. And as you can see back here in the Lehman days and then accelerating ever since then and again in uh, the COVID era. So, that, I mean, uh, and if you even go back because those gray bars indicate official recessions and it really started back in the 2000s, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can look at how, how it jumped in the 2000s. And then we had, of course, the housing bubble. So, you know, the everything bubble is, pro is, is popping, but what's most important, obviously, to central banks and governments is that corporations make money. That's clearly what they're saying there. 